Oh my gosh, we're back again, All Smiles Until I Return, by Aaron Beauregard. Now, a quick few things. Uh, the YouTube is set up. I uploaded pretty much every existing thing that I've already done here. As well as a Patreon has been set up. It should be above in my listings. It is the Bing Bing Fan Club, just two bucks a month. If you include your mailing address, I printed out a bunch of pictures of my lovely cat, Bing Bing, and I will sign them and try to have her put her paw print on them if I can, and I will send them to you. Just a an appreciation. All that money goes towards buying more credits for more books. If you don't want to drop the money, literally, I don't care. Keep it. It's yours. And a P.O. box will be set up this week. And if you didn't know already, October 1st, I am flying out to Australia for work. So I'll be there for about six months, but I'll continue to upload and all that stuff. Anyway. So we move on to All Smiles Until I Return. I do have the hard copy of this book, but I wanted to listen to it while I did work. So we open up the scene to our main character, Andy Cameron. Andy works at a large banking company that uh, his job is to answer phone calls and deal with customers. He's kind of at a point in his existence of just realizing his life is so mundane and boring and all he does is wake up, eat food, go to work, and slave away his entire life to, to what? Answering customer questions that he has to repeat every single day? People yelling at him for things that is not his fault? He can't deal with it anymore. He's exhausted. Like, what, what is my life? All I do is work, answer calls. I sit here, my muscles have atrophied. I don't work out, I don't go anywhere. I don't have any friends. I live alone. I'm middle-aged. Nobody will miss me when I die. What's to my legacy? I'm good at answering calls. I work for a bank that doesn't give a shit about me. Like what, what is left in my life right now? The good questions. As Andy sits at his desk and works, uh, he gets a call from a customer complaining about a, a transaction. Um, why is there a transaction um, removing money from my account? Uh, it looks like rent was paid. No, I did not authorize this money. Do you still live at blank, 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 blank address? Yeah, but that's none of your concern. That has nothing to do with my money being gone. Sir, this is an automatic payment that removes money from your account to pay your rent. If you're still living that at that address, then th you're still paying rent, right? The, the amount taken out is blank amount of money. Therefore, that is your rent being taken out. It, do you not want this to happen? I'm not understanding your complaint here. I did not authorize this money to be removed from my account. I don't care if it's for rent. I don't want... I okay, Let me speak to your manager. This is ridiculous. <sighs> Sir? Sir? I want to speak to your manager. This is fucking ridiculous. No. What? No, you can't speak to my manager. Go fuck yourself. Click. And as soon as Andy finished that call, feeling satisfied with himself, her floor supervisor, Tatiana, comes in and gathers everyone for a team meeting. Oh gosh, it's meeting day. Oh god. This is when we get pulled into a meeting. They're gonna review some phone calls because of our ratings or whatever. Someone gets their ass chewed. And we all go back to work. This this gives me a time to just zone out for a couple hours. Sweet. So all the employees of this bank on this specific floor are pulled into a room, and this is where every month they review not so great phone calls to kind of set an example for people. Their floor lead Tatiana begins to explain how their ratings have dropped entirely. Their ratings are so bad that they're in a a sore spot on their charts. So uh, Tatiana has a list of names pulled up as they're getting ready to listen to pre-recorded phone calls and kind of pick apart what people are saying to customers. Everybody is hella nervous. Nobody likes these meetings because you are put under a microscope by the leads. If you've ever had this kind of job, you get it. The scene kind of pans to Philip, one of the employees sitting across from Andy, who is visibly like, Kind of shaking, jittery, fidgety, sweating, super nervous. 
damn, you know, we're all nervous, but Philip is extra nervous today. Wonder if he's okay. The dude is really fucking weird, though. He's a weird guy. Anyway, Tatiana's boobs look freaking great today. Look at those ta ta Tatianas. Philip is described as uh, a larger man who is uh, easily forgettable within the office. Weird vibes, baby face with hair on it, kind of fidgety and is known to just kind of loiter around the office and talk to people or try to talk to people, but he kind of keeps to himself. He is visibly like sweating through his shirt, nervous about something. Andy is sitting next to a coworker who he's very attracted to, a Janine. A 24-year-old mom of two, super, like, bombshell blonde. Super sweet, though. God, Janine just looks great today. <sighs> I know she already's married and she has kids, but if I just had a chance with her, hmm, I wouldn't mind going on a date. Like, I don't even know what to talk about with Janine. Like, she's she seems to have her life together, and I'm, I'm wasting away here in the office. Yeah, hmm. And in front of everyone, Tatiana pulls up the list of names, and the mouse cursor hovers over Andy's name. February 13th of March. Oh, shit, that's my name. Fuck, March 13th, Friday the 13th. What day was that? What day was that? That was last month. What was I doing? What kind of call was that? It was a 15-minute phone call. 15-minute phone call, shit, what was that? Oh, it wasn't a good call. That, that day wasn't good. All the crazies are out on Friday the 13th, but what day was that? What call? That day, Fridays are typically a bad day for phone calls. I mean, everyone, yes, at that time, we all want to go, you know, go home and, and not be here anymore. It's towards the end of the day. What call was that? And in the midst of Andy's internal panic, Philip asks Tatiana, uh, Tatiana, I forgot my water bottle. Can I, can I go get my water bottle? Uh, yes, Philip, you can go get your water bottle, but be quick, okay? So Philip gets up, shoots out of the room to go get his water bottle, and everyone just kind of sits in silent, super uneasy. Everyone waits for a moment, and Philip is taking a little longer than they expected him to, but at that same moment, loud, eruptive noises are heard from the hallway. Proud to be in America! Gunshots are heard from the hallway. People screaming, people running by the door that is now closed. Everyone wide-eyed and like, geez, what, what the hell's going on? And before anybody could, you know, react, Philip burst through the door and he started blasting. Two Glocks, one in each hand, begins just losing it. Philip closes the door behind him and you know, points the gun at people. Immediately, he shoots one of the leads dead. Janine, the hot bombshell blonde with two kids that was sitting next to Andy, slowly raises from her seat to plead for her life. But before she could get any words out, Philip shoots her in the neck and she collapses onto Andy. Everyone is just kind of frozen and Philip turns to Tatiana, pointing the guns at her, and he begins rambling about, you corporate pigs take all of our money, you know, we're getting in trouble for things we don't even do, I'm wasting away, I'm wasting my fucking life here, you don't care, you never cared about us, all you care about is ratings, you don't care about us, we don't get any time off, we, what is this for? You treat us like garbage, you're just a puppet to the corporation, they don't care about you, they don't care about us, they don't care about any of us. And they're taking our money, and they're taking our customers' money, and they're taking your money. And you're here for it, you dirty, slimy puppet, you. And Tatiana just kind of gently speaks to Philip, like, hey, it's, uh, all right, all right, guy. It's gonna be all right. And he's just not having it. He just, blah, blah, blah. Gra ta ta and uh, shoots her dead. And then, like, Philip turns to the rest of everyone else in the room, and he's like, don't worry. We're in this together. I don't want to hurt any of you. I don't want to hurt any of you. You guys can leave when I off myself. 